Hello and welcome back to some more Bitburners. So in the last video, we created a script called QService that allows us to have multiple senders and multiple receivers communicate with each other. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to be covering, I, I guess, a high level plan on how we can modularize launch fleets with these concepts and also um, walk you through where, where this can be applied. Um, but before we do that, let's, uh, let's jump into the, uh, the YouTube comments. Alright, so looks like we have four new comments here. Um, so first one is from Soul Fox, uh, commenting on Bitburner number 8. Um, so he says, how long did the, sp uh, the pirate scripts take to start making lots of money? It seems to take a long time to even make $1 billion and you have several trillion. Yeah, so it definitely doesn't take uh, a few hours. <laughs> it no, never does. Um, for me, I usually leave the, the script running for a day or so. Um, so that's why you could see that uh, my my game has several, several trillion dollars. Uh, but one tip I have when increasing your production rate is make sure that you upgrade your purchase servers. And then uh, this will in turn increase the, the amount of servers you have in your control, uh, which means that you can uh, start generating money a lot faster. Um, yeah, so next one is from Chris Barnes, Bitburner number 13. So that's the uh, latest video at, at, at a time of uh, recording this. Um, so this one is, he says, um, how long does it take for you to create or, or edit your videos? Uh, they're very well done. You definitely know yourself. Uh, thank you for that. Um, for me, I generally spend around four to six hours after work. Uh, I guess, you know, recording the video, coming up with solutions, um, and then uh, editing the video and then posting stuff. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's generally my schedule. But for the, the harder stuff, so things like really, really big changes, um, I tend to, I, I guess, spend a few days on coming up with the solution. Uh, but before the coming up with the solution, I don't jump straight into the code. I actually do quite a lot of planning beforehand, and then 20% of that is the code. So 80% 80, 80 planning, 20% actually coding it up. And the coding bit is the easiest bit. If you know where you're going to go, if you have the blueprint, uh, then you can basically code anything very, very quickly. Um, and that's essentially how the, I guess, how the software engineers work anyway. Um, you, you know, spend your time thinking about the solution, thinking about the problem. And then as soon as you have uh, a game plan, then that's when you execute. And then execution is very, very simple. Um, assuming that you don't have any dependencies on anyone else. Um, uh, but with that said, um, I actually want to make a big channel announcement. Uh, so a friend recently reached out to me to um, help her build uh, an MVP for her startup. So she's hiring me as a, as a freelancer. Um, and I'm going to need, I guess, the, the balance. So juggling between the, her project and then this. Um, so what's going to happen moving forward is that uh, I'm going to be recording Bitburner videos and then posting Bitburner videos once a week. And uh, the reason why once a week is because I just want to see where, um, you know, where, where that balance is. So I want to get used to the cadence. So I'll start small and then uh, gradually move up from that. Um, so yeah, that's that's the plan. So once a week, uh, I'm going to planning on uploading every Monday uh, morning. So over the weekend, I'm going to be recording and then um, that's about it. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully you guys understand and uh, I hope you guys keep watching my videos. Uh, so the third one is from they call me seven question mark uh, from the first bit burner video. Uh, so he says I get a runtime error unexpected token and then a bunch of numbers. Uh, sorry, we can't be more helpful when I tried to run auto deploy script on noodles. Anyone got solution? I'm very new to all this. Uh, yeah, so first off, uh, welcome to the Bitburners. This is definitely a really good game, and uh, and I hope that you you enjoy learning programming. Uh, so whenever you see this error here, unexpected token, and then a bunch of numbers, uh, the two numbers mean this is the row, and then this is the column. Uh, so what you're probably missing is uh, some sort of variable somewhere uh, at line 114, and uh, maybe double check that. Um, also, make sure that you look at the, the GitHub page just so that you have reference code to look at. 
Um, Alright, so last one is from Noxford uh, from Bitburner12. So he says, a suggestion maybe build a script that auto purchase a Tor browser and everything on the dark web, dark web. I think that's the only stuff missing to fully automate. Oh man, that is actually a, a really genius idea. Um, after you sent that comment, I actually started looking into it. Uh, turns out that you can do that, but you only unlock it sometime later in the game. As soon as you unlock the, I think called sor Source File 4, uh, which is comes very, very late game. But uh, apparently from the, I, I guess that Source File 4, you unlock this thing called Singularity API. And then... Um, you can then automate the actions of your own player and that's that's pretty cool so you can do stuff like purchase tour browser or upgrade your home computer and all that stuff uh, but that's definitely gonna come later down the line as soon as we progress the game um yeah so that's about it all right let's uh jump into the mirror to get through that uh high level plan all right, so here we are in Miro. Um, so the first thing I did when planning this out is I first analyzed how the launch fleets work at the moment. Um, so how launch fleets work at the moment is that uh, it uses two scripts. So launch fleets and then the find target script. Uh, so how it starts is that it first grabs the list of ships. So all our controllable servers and then it requests for all potential targets uh, from that from the find target script and then it returns a prioritized list of targets. Uh, it then creates the, the requir requirements for that. So uh, the attack details and then uh, it uses the find targets to determine the strategy to execute for the, uh, the requirements. And then as soon as we get the, the requirements and then also the list of ships, we then construct a bunch of fleets to attack all, all the servers within our network. Uh, and then we execute the attack and then we remove the assigned ships from the roster. So this flow is entirely good. Uh, there's really nothing wrong with it. Um, I, I guess the, the purpose of this, uh, the, this next part of the series is that um, I just wanted to see whether or not it's possible to modularize our code so that it's easier to change uh, stuff whenever we need to. Um, and so I created this uh, this high level plan here um, on how to actually modularize our launch fleet script. And as you can see here, the, the captain, the, the launch fleet script, then employed a whole bunch of other people. And what these uh, other people does is that they only have one job to do. So the bookkeeper is, is responsible for uh, keeping the list of uh, available ships. The strategist is um, responsible for uh, maintaining uh, a list of potential targets and then also uh, creating the attack details and requirements for that so that when the captain requests it, uh, it, it can readily return that. And then you have the warmonger here, which is responsible for, I guess, launching wars, um, so executing the attacks on the different servers. And then going through the flow here, how it's going to start is that the captain will request the, I guess, the list of ships from the bookkeeper. And then the bookkeeper will just return the list of ships it, it has on, on its uh, list. Uh, and then after that, it then requests uh, potential targets for uh, from the, the strategist. And what's going to happen is that this strategist will then analyze our network and then uh, grab all the potential targets and then construct the attack details. So all the delays, the sequence, the strategies, all of that will be constructed by our strategist. And then it's going to return that to the captain and the captain will receive the attack details from the strategist. Uh, and then after receiving the list of ships and then the attack details, we then construct the fleets uh, for the attack. Uh, and then after that, we then ma make a request to the warmonger uh, to send the attacks over the, to the other servers and then the warmonger will do its stuff. Um, and the, but, but whilst the, the warmonger is doing that stuff, then it's gonna, uh, I guess, send that, uh, so send the information about all the assigned ships to the bookkeeper so that the bookkeeper can then update its books and uh, update how much uh, memory each of uh, the servers are using. So yeah, so that's the high level flow of it. And as you can see, there's uh, quite a lot of stuff that are running in parallel. So the captain no longer has to take care of uh, a lot of logic. It just has to request stuff. Uh, and then this, each uh, component within this, uh, this service here uh, does one thing only. 
Um, and then I guess there, there's a question of where does market manipulation come into this um, this diagram here? So how the flow works with the strategist now is uh, first the captain requests for potential targets. The strategist then grabs all the potential targets from the network. Uh, request diamond hands from uh, for the list of targets for manip market manipulation uh, and then after that it reconstructs the attack details for each of those uh, each of those targets and then from the targets we then launch uh, our attacks and then update the, the roster so yeah so that's the high level po point of view and then in terms of where where does this uh, the queuing service come into play? Uh, essentially, the queuing service is the channel at which will uh, all these services will be communicating with each other. In terms of code, I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement the bookkeeper. Uh, but in future videos, I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement the warmonger, the uh, strategist, and then also the, the captain after that. Um, so it's definitely going to be quite a, a long series, but... Uh, for me, I see it as uh, it's going to be worth it, I think. Alright, so I think we managed to finish our book bookkeeper scripts. Um, so I created three, uh, two, two new scripts and then modified, I guess, the port utility file here. Um, so the bookkeeper is, again, responsible for uh, sending over the, the list of available ships as soon as it receives a request. The probe is used for testing purposes and then the port utilities I added a new function because I discovered that the listen for events doesn't work. Um, so let's uh, do a bit of a demo so I stop all the active scripts so that we can clearly see what uh, what each of them are doing. Uh, so how it works is that first we run our queue service because this is again the, the channel at which uh, all the services will be talking through. Um, and then we run the bookkeeper and then we specify the port that it communicates in. So port number one, for example, and then we open the, the logs for that one as well so that we can see what's happening. Um, and then at the moment, the bookkeeper is not doing anything because it's not receiving uh, any requests. But as soon as we run the probe, uh, so the probe takes in, I guess, the port number that it sends that. Uh, request in and then the request event so request ships and then the response event which is response ships and then from that um, what it's doing is that it first sends data across to the queue service the queue service then puts it onto the output port which is then passed onto the bookkeeper and then the bookkeeper then responds uh, to uh, the request and then sends that information back to the probe and then the probe then sees the new request. So as you can see here, here's all of our available ships and then here's all the available RAM between them. So that's that's how it all works. And if you imagine that for all our services and uh, yeah, so that's how we're gonna be doing it. So the captain, uh, the, the probe will essentially replace the captain because this is what's gonna be coordinating, I guess the scripts that's gonna be running. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, so let's uh, let's jump to the the actual code. Uh, so let's start with the port utilities. If we scroll down to the very bottom, uh, what I did was I changed the uh, listen for events to check for event. Uh, turns out that you can't call an asynchronous function, a, a asynchronous callback function, from within a while loop. So um, you have to create a, a function that does one thing only. And then what, what this function is doing is that it checks the, the output port. And then if the output port isn't empty, it then peeks at the first item within that output port and then double checks whether it's the right event. And then it removes, if it is the right event, then it removes it from the queue and then pushes that data uh, of that payload over to, over to the, uh, the one that's calling this function. Uh, so moving into the, I guess the, the probe, so this one's the, another simple one. Uh, essentially how it works is that it takes in, again, the, the port that it's going to send the request to. It doesn't ma matter where it is, it's just an input port, so 1 to 19. Um, and then it takes in the request event and then the response event. And one thing to know about this is that it's very case sensitive and it has to be the same, uh, I guess, the same definitions as you put on your, uh, I guess, other services. 
and then you have your max ticks here um, and the max ticks just represent when it's gonna time out so after five ticks five checks then it's gonna exit out and then say say uh, you know error timeout it's so that it doesn't get stuck in an infinite loop and then the tick duration is obviously how often does it check that payload so it checks every one second um, and then down here uh, moving into the main logic uh, the first thing we do is we push the request event over to the input port using the push to input port function that this port utility script provides um, and then after that we then uh, receive the payload from I guess the the res request response event and then if there's no payload so if it times out or it's there's just no data um, then it's gonna throw an error otherwise it's gonna print the actual payload onto our terminal and then in terms of the get payload here um, how it works is that we just count the number of ticks we're gonna go into a infinite loop and then uh, sleep for every one second so the tick duration is here um, and then for every loop we first uh, check whether or not uh, we've exceeded max number of ticks and then if it is then we just exit out of this function if it doesn't reach our max number of ticks then we check for events and uh, we are we already covered that so we just check the output uh, the output port for that response event and if, if there's anything it's going to return an object um, and then if there's data then we return that data otherwise we keep going and checking until it times out um yeah so that's the probe and then moving into this uh bookkeeper.js uh so essentially it's just the it encapsulates just the get ships function uh so starting from the top here uh we have um i guess the the port number so uh, it takes in a port and the reason for this is because um i want to dynamically assign the, the the port um on the captain script so that uh, everything will be ran in one place um and then you have your home server here our uh cracking penetration scripts and then some virus information and then moving down to the main logic i then define uh, i guess some of the uh request and response event i should probably move this up all right cool so that's uh put uh, moved up so the request event is just request ships uh, so this is what um, I guess this bookkeeper will be listening to and then the response is just response ships that's it um, that's as simple as that and the response event is the one that I guess the action that the bookkeeper will send to indicate that it has acknowledged that request um, and then moving down to the main loop here, um, so we first define the number of ticks, so it just uh, checks every half second uh, so that it doesn't wait for too long. Uh, and then uh, um, for every loop, we first check whether for that request event, um, and then we already know what that does, so it returns an object if there is anything. Uh, and then if there is anything, then we respond to that request. And how this respond request works is that we first grab the, our ships and then we push those ship data over to the input port and then it gets processed by our queuing service. Uh, and then moving into the queue, uh, the get ships, it's basically the same as whatever's in our launch fleet script. Uh, essentially, we grab all the nodes within our network and then we filter all of those nodes to the ones that we can penetrate and has enough RAM to support our virus. Uh, and then after that, we then uh, prepare our servers um, so that it can be controlled. So if it doesn't have root access, then we gain root access. And if it doesn't have the virus, then we just copy over the virus so that it can be readily used as soon as it's uh, returned by the end of this function. Um, and then we then map the servers to the available RAM. And this available RAM would then be used by, I guess, the captain to determine whether or not it can run or execute some of our threads. Yeah, so that's that's about it, uh, really. So it's very simple. And as you can see, it's very easy to debug because you know that if something's wrong with, the, I guess, the controllable, controllable servers, you then just have to go to the bookkeeper script, check what's wrong, and then that's about it um yeah so that's i guess uh my video um and uh again uh, moving forward i'm i'm gonna be posting once a week 
Um, so yeah, so I guess I'll see you guys in the next one.